יהי שם אדוני מבורך מעתה ועד עולם. שלום, good evening everyone. Uh, today the topic is שבועות. שבועות is in about four days. And um, 2019, why are we eating dairy food? Why dairy food on שבועות? And how we can fulfill the mitzvah if it's actually a mitzvah to eat meat on holidays. How we can solve this mystery. What are you going to do? So this Torah class is dedicated first to the sake of the soul of Shalom ben Nachum Zev. It will be, Bezrat Hashem, we're going to have Azkara this Thursday. In any event, we want to thank the Medina's family for hosting the show. God bless them with all the barachot and briut and shefa and abandon and good life. Amen. 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 Same to all of us. So why we are eating dairy food on Shavuot? What's the reason? We have, we're going to bring five, maybe, or six reasons. Do you have any idea? Anybody has an idea? Did you even know that we're eating dairy food? So first, how, how we can solve the problem? How we can eat? So you have a suggestion? What do you? OK, so I guess that's what you're doing here. You eat dairy first, and then meat. Fine. Some eat dairy in the evening, and meat in the morning, in the lunchtime. Or the opposite. It's all good. It's a mitzvah to eat meat, fall meat, right? Red meat, only if you enjoy out of it. Because it says that people have, when they, there is a special simcha, special joy for people you know, to eat meat. They like to do barbecue. Who doesn't like to eat barbecue? So when holiday comes, it makes them excited because we are going to have, going to eat meat for sure. Okay? So the, the, the Allah says it's make people very excited when they know holiday is coming and we're eating meat, good food, and drinking wine. But it's only if you like it, if you want it. If for you eating meat is suffering or you're vegetarian, you don't have to eat meat. Okay? On Shabbat, there is no mitzvah like Yom Tov. On Shabbat, there is no mitzvah to eat meat. You should have soda. The only time is a mitzvah to eat meat, it's on Yom Tov. Drinking wine, we do on every uh, special occasion, like Shabbat, like Yom Tov, and any other time we meet, we do Lachaim, and so forth and so on. Baruch Ato Adonoi Eloheinu Malachu Elom, Shakol. But, but you can eat a, a lot of meat in Shabbat? You can eat as much as you want. For example, for example, Ronan today ate a burger. Right? How do I know? Profit. You had to like the burger and it cost you $11, right? Yes. He's reading my thoughts. Okay. So, oh man. So, what's the first Tom, the first reason why we're eating dairy food on Shavuot. So when Bnei Israel received the Torah on the Mount of Sinai, the, all of a sudden discovered that there is a set of rules of how to slaughter an animal. It's going to take a special knife, and you do that that way, with the animal this way, and the halachot about the knife, about how you do the shirita, the blessing, and how to hold the animal or the chicken. So much, so many details. Till then, they didn't follow this halacha. They didn't have to. They didn't receive the Torah yet. So they found out that actually all the utensils they have, the pots, the forks, the knives, the silverware, everything is non-kosher. Because you didn't do it right. In order to kosherize it, kosherize it's going to take time. What is easy and quick to do? Dairy food. So they focused on dairy food till they will kosherize the pots later after the holiday. Okay? 
Why did he didn't do it immediately? So you know the halacha. How long does it take? Put a big pot. It's going to take you an hour. Prepare it. Go ahead and eat meat. Problem was, who knows the problem? Why they couldn't do it? Why when they heard the halacha from the month of Sinai? Because what day of the week they received the Torah? Shabbat. Shabbat. And on Shabbat, you can't do all that anyways. So they have uh, dairy food, they have milk that they can take right away. So no problem, okay? That's the reason number one. Reason number two, the Torah was compared to a milk. How you say milk in? Leche. Hebrew? Oh. <laughs> Halav, no, I'm a femot. Halav equals milk equals leche. If you learn, you know. She's learning. <laughs> Baruch Hashem. At Torah, the Torah compared to halav, leche, milk. Halav. As the Pasuk says in Shira Shirim, in the, sing, the, sing, the songs of all songs, right? Uh, chapter 4, verse 11. Devash ve halav. Tahad leshoner, milk and honey under your tongue. This is where you eat the burger. Mm-hmm. You see? <laughs> exactly like the milk can nutrish, give you good nutrition um, and support you. The Torah is nutritional, give you nutrition, right? Um, spiritually. So that's the reason compared to milk. Milk, milk, they milk. Reason number three. How much is milk in gematria, halav? No, chet is eight, plus two, plus 30. Lamed is 30. 40. Halav, the gematria, the numerical value of halav is 40. Why we, what's, how, how 40 is connected to the Mount of Sinai? Moshe? Yep. She, uh, she get the price today. <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu, he was on the Mount of Sinai for 40 days. And 40 days in milk is gematria. This is another, this is the same value. And the Talmud also start with the word mem, with the letter mem, me'ematai, right? And ends with the letter mem, mem is 40, the gematria, the numerical value. Of it, of it is for 40. Anyways. Um, another very interesting by the Zohar, the Kabbalah. The fourth reason is very interesting. According to the Zohar, each day of the week, of the, of the year, we have 365 days. Each day of the year is corresponded to one of the 600, 365 days. Mitzvot. We have 365 days, and there's 365 mitzvot to do. Right? Mm -hmm. So we have, I'm sorry, we have 365 mitzvot not to do. Sorry, not to do. We have 248 to do, Mm -hmm. and 365 not to do. So each day of the week, of of the year, is corresponded to one mitzvah. And which one not to do Falls on Shavuot, the day of Shavuot. The Torah says, Reshit Bikure Admatecha Tavi Bet Hashem Elokecha. That the beginning of the fruit, it's called Bikurim. The first fruit you bring to Bet Amigdash, and the Pasuk ends with, Loteveshel Gedi Bechalevi Mo. Should not cook a kid in, the mother, in its mother's milk. Okay, not kid like child, kid like, I think they spell it K I D. Should not cook a goat in its mother milk. It's, it's, I mean, it should not mix milk and meat together. So, because of the first day, when we bring the Bikurim, is Shavuot. The Torah also called Bikurim, uh, the Shavuot, Chaga Bikurim, the holiday of the Bikurim. The... Other half of the pasuk, when we have to uh, we have to avoid from eating and mixing milk and meat together, 
is the mitzvah of not to do. The beginning is of the Pasuk is to do, to bring Bikurim. The second one is not to do. Don't mix milk and meat. So you can't eat cheeseburger. There's a fake cheeseburger, you know? I saw it's a real burger with a soy uh, cheese. And I saw the opposite. There's a milk, I mean, I'm sorry, there's a real cheese. Where is a fake? Uh, Patty. They're saying it tastes pretty good. I don't know. So that's the mitzvah that corresponded to Shavuot. This is why we have in Shavuot two saudot, as we mentioned before. One is going to be dairy, and the other one is going to be with meat. And we never mix the two. Okay? By the way, we don't mix the bread. There's special bread, going to be for the dairy, and special bread for the meat. Meat. Uh, I mean, we can, can mix the two, because you touch it and... Uh, so whatever left over, keep it away. Just bring in new meat, a new uh, bread. bread for the table, on the table. I'm going to give a price, a big price, if you answer the following question. The question is as follows. You know what? Maybe I even uh, talked about it before. The Torah says that the first fruit you bring to the Beit HaMikdash. You come out, you see a beautiful figs, you mark it, when it's ripe, you take it off, put it in the basket, you bring it to Rushalayim. Fine. If you have fruits in your backyard, okay, or if you're a farmer. So the beginning of the Pasuk says about Bikurim. Bring Bikurim to the Kohen, the priest in Yerushalayim. Fine. The Pasuk ends with, do not mix milk and meat together. So the question is, what's the connection? The beginning is talking about fruits. The end of the passage is talking about don't mix meat, meat and milk together. What is the connection between the two? Big price. hundred dollars? It's good enough? The kid is Five hundred dollars? The kid is the first fruit also. There will be on the way. What you're saying is, it's a little bit. You say, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you smell the bill. <laughs> There's something, there's something which you're saying. It's not what I'm uh, aiming to. But, uh, it's one of the first things what you're saying. Listen to this. According to the Torah, we cannot eat meat and milk together. We all know that, right? Mm -hmm. We also cannot get any benefit of it. So if I accidentally see a whole pot mixed with milk, I have to throw it away. I have to trash it. I can't even feed the dogs with it. I can't even sell it. My neighbor comes, he's not Jewish. He says, I give you $50, don't throw it. It's a lot of food. It's, for me, it's good. Can I take $50? I can sell it to him. And the third prohibition is, you should not even do it, for, even for someone else. You don't eat, they can benefit. You, know? you can't get benefit out of it. We've learned that? Fine. Now, The Sforno on the Torah brings something very interesting. He said many years ago, they had a very special trick. What did they do? They used to cook in a big pot, or a small pot, in a pot, milk and meat together, even leftovers. The non-Jews used to do it. And they would take the soup, or whatever comes out of it, and they would pour it, to the, around the trees. And the tree will bring, will produce wonderful, unbelievable fruit. You could see a field that they didn't do it. You will compare the fruits, totally different. Bigger, uh, tastier, sweeter, something, something unbelievable. So what, what would we say? Say, ah, you know what? I want to bring Bikurim to Hashem the best fruit. So I'm just, I'm not going to eat. I'm just going to cook and take the juice that we're going to pour. My tree will produce great fruit and this fruit will bring to Hashem. The Torah says, even if you have good intention to do a mitzvah, to bring beautiful fruit to Beit HaMikdash, yet you are not allowed to do this cooking and putting it on the tree. You do that before? You knew this information before? 
You get it? You get the idea? Which means, even for the sake of a mitzvah, you can do this averasim. For example, someone wants to have quiet in the shul. You see people talking, so, yeah, man, yelled at them, he insulted them. But the mitzvah is, he, he wants to make quiet in the shul. But this is a mitzvah that comes with avera, with the sin. It happens all the time. It's just an example. Kapish? Kapash. Next. So that was the fourth reason. Fifth reason. The Mount of Sinai has another name. It's also called Har, it's called Har Sinai, the Mount of Sinai. And it's called Har Gavnunim. Like he has a hump. Giben. And Gvina, it's, mean, Gvina is dairy food. It's uh, cheese. Right? So when we see the cheese, and we see cheese, it reminds us the Mount of Sinai. Also, Givina in the miracle value is 70. And there is a 70 ways to interpret the Torah, to look at the Torah. It says, Shivim Panim La Torah. 70 faces, the faces, sides right, to the Torah. The, let's finish with the uh, sixth reason. Moshe. I mean, Matheri Ba'it's Pamba. Moshe. Moshe, he born on the seventh day in the month of Adar. And he remained in the house for three months. So he was born at the seventh. His mother didn't carry him to, till the end. And he, he remained, he stays with his parents for three months, with his family. Before he was put in, in, in a small box, or a small teva ark basket on the Nile on the sixth and the, and on, on the month of Sivan, sixth day. Moshe was saved by Batya, the daughter of Pharaoh. You know, by the way, what was Moshe names? Moshe names was Simcha and Tovia, many names. Mm-hmm. Only one gave him the word Moshe. Who was it? Batya. Mm-hmm. And Hashem says. We're following what she said. Hey, my daughter of Paro! Why we should listen to her? Her parents gave her a name already. His parents gave him a name. She Shem says no. Muhammad, yeah. Alive. Alive, yeah. One of the ten. One of the ten. Because Hashem says, I'll teach you your great lesson to be grateful. She saved him. She fed him. She raised him. She called him Batya, Hashem says. I'm putting my signature on it. That's his name. His name, Moshe. She called him Moshe. It's going to be Moshe. So he was saved by Batya, or some say Bitya, the daughter of uh, Pharaoh. Um, minutes later, she started to uh, ask herself what and how she can feed the baby. Okay? You didn't have special uh, food in the supermarket there. You have to have someone, a woman, that will breastfeed the baby. So, the mother, Yocheve, the mother of Moshe, was not there. They decided to hire, and they had plenty, a woman. When they had babies, they pay her. It's called Meneket. I don't say, I don't say Meneket in English, I don't know. A woman that she is breastfeed by other babies. It's called Hebrew men naked. And Moshe refuses. He doesn't eat. And he's crying. They brought another lady, another one. A long line of ladies came. He didn't. Till Miriam came and says, you know, I know the mother, the mother of this boy. I think she will uh, be able to do it. They call you Chavit immediately. He says, call her immediately. Chavit came. Not only she gave him, she feeded him, she got paid by Bitya. So she, he was saved, and now Yochev got a new job to take care of uh, Moshe Rabbein. She was there with him every day to feed him. Wow. Be- why is that? The Talmud says because his mouth has to stay, remain pure because he came from a line of Jewish, Jewish line and he has to be 
only from his mother, from the original. Okay? A mouth that was supposed to speak with the Shekhinah, speak with Hashem. So he has to have his biological mother. You see, so ironic. Pharaoh is trying to get rid of the Jews because his magicians told them that someone from the Jews one day will rise up against you. So he killed all the boys and he doesn't know that he's raising him in his house, feeding him. <laughs> you think you can fight against Hashem? You think you're going to win? Hashem will put him in your house on your expense. When you look outside, where is he? He's in your house. All right. So, at the end of the day, it's a special day when he born and he was saved and he was drinking milk. All these things reminding us to eat dairy food on Shavuot. Okay? So, actually, we're doing Kiddush. Amotzi Lechem. And then eat whatever you want. Pizza, burekas, whatever. Okay? If you have enough room, you can eat right away meat. All right? I mean, you clean up your mouth, you can eat a little bit bread, or you wash your mouth, you can eat immediately, clear the table, and you can eat meat, no problem. It's not, I don't, personally, I don't recommend that, because we have to eat, uh, we have to stay awake all night. When you eat heavily, when you eat even a lot of dairy food, it's going to make you sleepy. Just eat a little bit, so you can survive the night, and prepare yourself during Shabbat. Go to sleep on Shabbat. Take a long siesta. Mm -hmm. So during the night, we're going to have Torah classes. I'm going to give his Hashem in English, me and uh, Bishama. And he's going to, we're starting at 12, p, 12 a.m. till 4.45 a.m. It's going to be four or five classes. A 10 minutes break. Bezat Hashem is going to be very interesting. But you have to prepare yourself. So don't eat too much. Don't drink alcoholic beverages. Sleep during Shabbat so you can survive the night. And it says by the Zohar, if that night you study Torah, no interruptions, and you are focusing on Torah learning, guarantee that you survive this year and nothing harmful will come to you. And you make good money in your Parnassah and you get good Besorot of it. It's a promise that didn't say it. The Ariya Kadosh himself said that. But you have to make efforts. Sometimes you have people, they make an effort about their sleep. It's better go home, sleep at home. Uh, There's no point in that. If you prepare yourself, you will get a lot of blessing. Remember we've said that any event, great event that ever happened in, in, in history, it comes back, his, his, his energy comes back at the same date. So we received the Torah that day. Imagine how much wisdom coming at that night. It's going to be Saturday night, this Saturday night, coming up. Great energy. Take advantage of it. Focus on Torah learning and prepare yourself more than anything else. Any questions? Okay, I think we'll stop here for today. Um, on behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation, I want to thank everybody who participated in this class. Please go to our website. I don't know if you're already doing this, but if you do that, I get immediately email, text message that you did it. As, um, especially before the Hag, the holiday, it's important to support and give to our organization that spread Torah and help people that in need. All right? Any questions? God bless you all. See you in a minute in our second part of the class. Thank you.